Welcome to a new edition of Urgent Dialogues about Human Rights on the Internet, the interview cycle organized by Wikimedia Argentina. My name is Luisina Ferrante. I'm the Education and Human Rights Manager at Wikimedia Argentina, and I will be in charge of coordinating this meeting. Uh, today, we have the pleasure of talking and sharing experiences about human rights topic in the Wikimedia movement throughout the Wikimedia projects. To get started, I will introduce my three colleagues uh, that will be participating in this urgent dialogue called Make Visible the Invisible. First of all, Florencia Guastavino, it's the project assistant in the Education and Human Rights Program, who will be my partner in this interview today. And our two special guests, Emna Misoni uh, from Tunisia, She's part of the Global Board of Directors of Access Now. And also she was honored as a Wikimedian of the Year last year, 2019, mm -hmm. as a result of the leading role she has played in the development of Arab and African communities, as well as her success in, the promoting, in promoting the history and culture of Tunisia. We have the great participation of Fleur Meshine. She's in charge of the community liaison for French language contributors at Wikimedia Switzerland. To begin with, I give the floor to Florencia Guastavino and let's get started with the questions. Thank you, Luli. And it's really nice to be here with you today. Um, the first question we have is um, to, to get started with some of the experiences that you have um, done in your countries. Uh, we wanted to know if you were involved in the development of working experiences related to human rights and Wikimedia projects within your communities, uh, if you were in involved yourselves or if you have learned or know about any working experiences, uh, and if you have, what have you learned about uh, the, those experiences? For me, it's not part of, like, when it comes to human rights and, and Wikipedia, it's not part of a, an instrumentalized or a community-driven activity as much as it's a, um, a mission that I believe should be part of every Wikipedian's path, Um, and especially in this era of um, misinformation and disinformation. Um, personally, I, I started my, um, I started to notice the lack of, um, or the, the gap in terms of uh, content about, for example, human rights defenders um, and the defamation that some, uh, some parties they are trying to do Um, I would say recently, but it's not that recent, uh, but comparing to everything that I did within the Wikimedia movement, it's very recent. Um, and so it's like, it's an individual um, role that I, I am taking in charge. Um, I, I was like, I really had high hopes um, and I was extremely happy when um, Wikimedia Argentina led the work Um, and human rights and the content related to human rights um, and was the reason why the Wikimedia Foundation signed a convention with um, um, uh, the UNHCR, if I'm not mistaken. There are so many agencies, so I always get confused. Anyway, so that was a very good start uh, for the movement, I would say. Um, I know there was experiences in few countries and some countries, including Tunisia. I was not part of the experience in Tunisia in person, um, although I supported it from afar. Um, Flor will be talking about this um, in a moment, but I would say um, there is a huge need uh, across uh, the Arab and African region um, to talk about this and to add more content and to contribute more. Um, there is a lot of back and forth when it comes to this specific topic, uh, and I hope to see more involvement. Yeah, so I, I completely agree with what you mentioned of the hopes that uh, seeing uh, Wikimedia Argentina signing an agreement um, uh, or helping the, found the Wikimedia Foundation sign an agreement with the UNHCHR. I think, I, I, ho I hope I'm getting the H's right. 
Um, and uh, a bit before that, I had been made aware by the director of Wikimedia Switzerland of the work that uh, Wikimedia Argentina was doing. So I went through your website. I was interested in seeing um, the fact that you had chosen, the way you had chosen to work, uh, which was to uh, pair up with uh, local associations on specific topics for human rights, which seemed to be... Um, well, a way to be very close to the reality and to the um, and very up to date concerning uh, tools, etc., to access human rights. Uh, further on, what happened next for me is I was made aware of uh, a workshop made about human rights in Tunisia, um, for which we were asked to contribute financially because Wikimedia Switzerland supports French language chapters um, uh, when they ask when the uh, workshop seems to correspond to our aims. Uh, that was the case. And um, then uh, because a Wikipedians meeting together in Tunisia, some of them were also part of another project, which is about uh, adding more women to Wikipedia, uh, making more gender equality in it. Uh, we're also based in France. So uh, I think these people helped the Tunisia workshop from afar and uh, did one also in France to, uh, to which I went in Marseille. And for these workshops, they did uh, follow up the Wikimedia Argentina um, model of uh, teaming up with um, as an association. So um, what happened there was very interesting because we did end up uh, meeting people who had sources, who had uh, relevant sources, up-to-date sources, and on top of that, uh, who were extremely motivated to contribute to Wikipedia to understand the rules. Then, uh, so uh, one of the volunteers there was also interested in doing, continuing this work uh, also in uh, Switzerland. So we paired up with her as a chapter to develop a project and uh, try to reach out with local um, associations. And what we tried to do next was uh, start a conversation with long-term Wikipedians uh, to see how... Um, well, to help people who are mainly uh, activists to have an idea of what the rules are, what, uh, how they can contribute, and how, instead of just contributing themselves, they can help uh, long-term Wikipedians to uh, find relevant sources, up-to-date sources on the topics. On our end, it was well received by long-term Wikipedians because they were um, quite interested by the issue of human rights and uh, were hoping to to help on this topic, but it's quite broad. So uh, having these partnerships help find topics um, and uh, start uh, contributing. So I think this is the main things I can I can say about this. Great, thanks to both. Um, one one of the main parts of the work we do here with human rights in Wiki Human Rights in Argentina is to partner with uh, human rights organizations. So it's really interesting that this happened between what is the Wikimedia movement and what can the Wikimedia movement offer uh, other organizations, but also how we learn and what we learn about that partnership. And it's really interesting uh, in in how we we give our tools to that those organizations and how those organizations can uh, be civilized, show all the activists that they are doing and also uh, what uh, is need to be done, as Edna also said, what what we need to, to show on internet and on other parts of uh, our daily lives as to human rights to be guaranteed uh, to every person in the world. So that is really great uh, to show how it we, we, we vinculate and we work with organizations in each country. Um, to continue further, uh, regarding your experiences or your personal opinion, what challenges do you consider that are important among the Wikimedia movement regarding human rights topic? So there is one first challenge, which um, uh, is the fact that we, uh, when you get on the one side activists, on the other hand Wikipedians, you need to moderate the discussion because activists are very passionate, they are going one direction, they are very um, at the cutting edge of their knowledge, which might, because of the fact that it's cutting edge, not uh, uh, fit with the notability criteria. 
But if you uh, lead a conversation, uh, people can understand what's relevant of what they have. I mean, activists can understand what's relevant of their criteria and uh, Wikipedians can use what these people are bringing. So this is the first challenge I had, which was, uh, well, I had, that we had that was not so hard to overcome, like because on both sides, we're lucky to have people interested in collaborating. Um, what was a bit more surprising to me is um, I was, um, so because I was involved in long-term Wikipedia, so this is going to be technical, what I'm going to say, um, I was uh, to, to show what was happening during the workshop, I was looking to use a, an outreach dashboard, which is a way to keep track of contributions uh, for a set amount of time, but not on a not with a thematic range, uh, not with a thematic focus. So uh, it's kind of hard to keep track of what uh, long-term Wikipedians are doing um, through this uh, tool because uh, this tool will keep track of everything they're doing, and these people contribute on an extremely wide range of topics. If you just set an entire day, you're going to see things that are linked to your workshops and things that are not. So I had hoped to ask them to just put something on their edit um, uh, summary, uh, like basically hashtag wiki human rights. So I can use a tool and look for uh, the hashtag wiki human rights. And to my surprise, this raised a lot of concerns, uh, a lot of concerns. These Wikipedians were af afraid to be tracked because they were uh, using uh, hashtag wiki human rights. They were very concerned of um, yeah, basically being tracked, stalked uh, by other Wikipedians. And um, I was also surprised to find out that something that seemed to me at the beginning as neutral and as um, obvious as uh, supporting human rights was actually um, politically loaded and uh, a source of concern. I would join Flora in what she said about the outreach tool because it, as much as we rely on it, as much as it's not really accurate, um, generally speaking, when it comes to different activities that we do in workshops, but also when it comes to trying to track um, uh, I would say the human rights content um, that we generate through the, um, the workshops that we do. Um, and that was one of the issues that I had personally in one um, workshop that I hosted, I believe that was last year when we were able to um, commune and gather together in one room and have an exchange. Um, some people, and especially the newbies, they were so um, not familiar with this tool, and so they did not add their uh, usernames. It's the struggle of some people, they are like, I would say, activists. Um, these are the main challenges that I faced in real life and the ground. Real activists who are really willing to contribute um, to the human rights topics and articles, but they are not familiar with the platform. Um, they, uh, then I would say the motivation would, would make everything notable for them. So, and how to teach them the policy, and I hate using the word teach, but, and how to make it clear for them how the policy in Wikipedia and how it's different actually, from one Wikipedia, one language to the other. Um, and we would like uh, to condense all of that in one session. This is a lot. So um, we have a lot of things. And I think turning Wikipedians who are um, used to the platform into um, writers and contributors about human rights is way uh, more um, fast, I would say. It's really faster than turning activists to Wikipedians. Um, and that creates a little bit of frustration that we have to deal with both. Um, and also, um, it's like I, I dealt with uh, activists and journalists, and in both ways, they're full of enthusiasm to write. But in, at the end, it's very, very difficult for them to get the to differentiate between the style of, for example, a journalistic style and the Wikipedia um, norm. Um, 
also one of our, the other challenges that we face um, in certain countries, and here I'm not only talking about Africa or the Arab region, but in other countries as well, when we're talking about human rights, um, it, it definitely comes with the political label. And so both labels, they are a little bit alarming. Um, they are like signs for, um, for certain countries um, where some Wikipedians, they are under dictatorship or authoritarian regimes. It's very, very um, risky to edit Wikipedia when it comes to that. And at the same time, it's very, um, um, for us, it's very, very inconvenient to add for example, articles about certain uh, countries where we lack the knowledge um, of that country and the culture. So those are really um, issues that we're facing, um, but also putting people under risk. Some people, before they, um, they start editing, they don't really know how to, uh, for example, how to use um, certain ways to edit, how to stay uh, anonymous, um, and that Wikipedia is not about using your own name, but you could use um, um, a username that is very different and you keep um, the anonymity online. So those are things that we're trying to uh, work on. So I, I do it through different hats with different people from the community uh, across the world. We're aware of this and we're trying to um, uh, to support some uh, some Wikimedians around and uh, those who are really willing to add content about human rights. Um, we're always, we always say we're not into just labeling people as notable where they are not, but also it's very important that certain people, they have a um, Wikipedia entry. And this is a whole debate here. We, it happens that also the Wikipedia policies are not that friendly uh, in certain cases. Um, it's again, it's the whole uh, dialogue or discussion about having um, articles about women taken down from Wikipedia. When I say taken down, it's not the same as content moderation in social media platforms, but it's about the deletion of the entry because it lacks notability. So um, I think I, I covered more or less uh, most of the things that we talked about we faced in real life. I agree with all that you said. Um, I think that something that Emna mentioned when she was like describing uh, the kind of work that we do when we are carrying out workshops with activists, journalists, and also with a long-term uh, community that is editing Wikipedia, we made like a pedagogical work it's not teaching it's more like trying to 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 achieve or to to give some idea of what means editing wikipedia and what is the all that universe that uh, mostly the people that started working with us uh, in relation with human human rights didn't know how wikipedia works or who are the users uh what are who who admin Wikipedia and all that, that it's something that the, the people didn't know so much. And in our workshops, we always try to, to make like a pedagogical entry about that uh, because we think that it's important to know how the universe uh, inside Wikipedia works so you can know the way you are or the people you are reaching when you are writing about any topic. Related to human rights, it's more important because we know that depends on the context and also the, the trajectory of people that it's working on that. But it's important for us, this pedagogical idea of approaching people that it's the first time that it's thinking Wikipedia with an editor mind. So in that point, and also relating this with the Wikimedia movement, um, and with your different experiences in your countries and also with different communities and languages where you work with editing Wikipedia with a human rights perspective. Um, our next question is related to um, 
Will you state that the Wikimedia movement is an ally for the promotion and protection of human rights? And what sort of a strategy could be carried out in order to achieve or to strengthen the human rights ally status? I don't know if you can go on that reflection because perhaps we have different ideas of that, but I think that it's important to think the role of the Wikimedia movement as an ally in this kind of, of, of experiences related to promotion and protection of human rights. Saying that the Wikimedia movement is an ally is a big thing. I would say the Wikimedia movement should be an ally to human rights and take care, um, take an active role in taking it very serious in terms of content and in terms of um, assessing the risks all over the world where Wikimedians um, exist, and also in terms of uh, support to Wikimedians at risk or in uh, risky countries. Um, definitely, we have a major role. We are the sum of human knowledge. We're aspiring to be the sum of human knowledge. That means a lot of information. And again, we're in an era where disinformation is so big, the misinformation as well. And so Wikipedia could be a tool used against humanity in that um, we have a major role to play as Wikimedians and as a movement and as a foundation in this. Um, so I, I always um, believe that we have a very noble um, cause that we're carrying and we're living for. We're so invested in it as volunteers with different uh, in different ways we're invested uh, we're invested in terms of content in terms of time giving in terms of um contribution uh, support to other members of the community recruiting members to the community and so we should invest also to make sure that we don't put members at risk we don't um allow um externals and especially that it Wikipedia is edited by everyone is possibly um, the possibility of having um, any type of misinformation in Wikipedia, we should fight it. Um, I'm always hopeful when it comes to that. I just wanna, don't want to sound like very um, pessimistic, but I'm very, very hopeful when it comes to this because I know how the, um, the gatekeepers um, of Wikipedia, they're acting. Um, sometimes the, the information um, and the entries, there are so many, but I know there are people who are there to correct. Um, I would always give the example of the articles in, um, in medicine and how they are constantly updated, they are constantly checked um, by a huge number of um, Wikipedians across the world. And so should be the content related to, um, to human rights. Um, and so we should keep the work that we're doing. So what, um, what we're doing across the, uh, I would say the Arab and African uh, countries is important that we make it as part. Um, we're contributing a lot in medicine. We're contributing a lot in the Arabic language and local languages, different languages in Africa. Um, we're contributing a lot in the GLAM projects and education. It's time for us to take into consideration um, the importance of um, human rights, women rights that are human rights, um, the rights of minority. Um, women are not really represented in Wikipedia. Also, I would say not only women, but black um, the black community is not, black leaders there are not. And I think I would um, send it over to Flor with what Wikimedia Switzerland is doing with Noircir Wikipedia, um, the work they are doing into like adding more content about um, non-white content, I would say. Um, uh, so yes, it's very important that we make this uh, not shift, but we add this to the agenda of Wikipedians as something a must do. Um, yes, thanks for men mentioning uh, Noircir Wikipedia, which is also in the Gresser Wikipedia. They're 
mainly French and Spanish. Uh, uh, well, they're a group right now. They're not a user group. They're just uh, two people who started the project to add um, actually more uh, African, Afro-descendant um, people, culture, cultural elements, etc., to to Wikipedia. And indeed, there is an issue on Wikipedia concerning minorities. It's um, uh, it's documented. As far as women are concerned, it's been documented for a while. I'm not sure how well documented other minority of the lacks concerning other minorities are, but that's something that um, should, of course, be uh, very important to the foundation to to support human rights in general, um, because, of course, minorities are even more affected than. Uh, the general public by human rights violations. Um, to, to go back to the question, uh, very concretely what happened, uh, we, we did receive, I mean, as far as uh, Wikimedia Switzerland uh, is concerned, we did receive some very practical help from uh, the foundation because we're lucky to have the, well, we're in Switzerland, so we're lucky to have the United Nations uh, Office of the High Commissioner for human rights right close by in Geneva. So um, as uh, some people from the TEF Foundation traveled, I'm thinking of Jorge Vargas, so thanks Jorge, uh, who helped us uh, get in touch with them, um, which in turn helped us attract um, interesting associations locally, which might not have been so keen on working uh, with uh, uh, something called Wikimedia because it's, like with, uh, I'm not sure with, uh, if we did not have uh, UN backing, we would have appeared as a relevant partner concerning human rights, even though that we inside know that we're next an important tool for knowledge. And every time like people don't know something, they look it up on a search mo uh, search mo motor and will like end up on Wikipedia very quickly. So uh, we know that this is a, that we're a very important point of entry for information. And uh, since people use uh, the internet a lot to, to find this information, we are a key um, a partner. But uh, being having the luxury of having doing workshops with people from countries that uh, have no uh, concerns uh, to be persecuted by their states. So basically the human rights uh, projects I did in Switzerland were took place online which uh, allowed in French because uh, I work with the French language community. So this meant I had both people from Switzerland and from France. And uh, for these people, they're not threatened by the state so far if they are writing about human rights. Uh, but they still feel, felt threatened and uh, they felt threatened by other Wikipedians. So for this, I really hope um, the, the foundation can help foster um, healthier climates. So I know right now they're working on a, on a universal code of conduct. Uh, I don't know the fine details of this project. I'm, I'm putting hopes that this can uh, help create, well, help foster more peaceful uh, conversations between Wikipedians uh, across the board. Um, but this is something that we're needing um, from the foundation that it helps foster uh, a healthy conversation within uh, existing Wikipedians. So it can also become more friendly and uh, uh, for uh, newer Wikipedians. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Flora and Emna. Um, to continue with that, two last questions that we have. I want to, to return to something that Evna mentioned before, that it's related to how to make these experiences safer for the communities or for the editors or activisms that, that are participating for the first time in these kind of proposals. What practices do you think are crucial when developing activities or projects related to human rights violations in their context? I don't know if Flor or Emna have like some experiences in developing these kind of activities in contexts where it's really, really difficult to do it. And I think that it's really important to think the minimum of a practice that we have to achieve and the maximum of what it's important as movement, but the very little act
activities that we think when we are developing these kind of workshops related to make safer places for communities, uh, it's important to, to, to frame our work related with human rights. This is a very, very important question. Um, the things that we should really take um, care of when we're uh, organizing something in some countries, I would say we have a bad habit as um, Wikimedians, um, or it's a good habit, but also it could be bad for human rights. When we have a workshop, we tend to have everything very transparent. Usernames, names on Meta, everybody, the place is disclosed, the venue, the time, uh, the topic, everything is on Meta. And so in certain uh, topics, when we're talking about authoritarian regimes, it's very, very, I would say, highly not recommended to do this. Um, also, um, I would say that the foundation is doing a great job in establishing um, a new way of doing certain things and the trust and safety could be approached uh, to support in this. The team of the trust and safety, they are really, really helpful. Um, whenever there is um, any issue or there is any will to organize a human rights workshop, I think people and the community leaders, they should reach out to the trust and safety first um, with those questions. We're organizing this, how can we do it? Do you have a manual for that, for example? And I'm, I am sure I'm more than uh, like, um, confident that the trust and safety team will be of support. Um, and also uh, another thing, um, we've seen a lot of, uh, uh, I would say in certain um, conferences, uh, including Wikimania last year, last year, 2019, uh, Wikimania in Stockholm, we had, for example, um, a booth for uh, Access Now someone from Access Now giving advices to Wikimedians. I'm pretty sure this is not stopping um, anytime soon. This will be part of, um, of every conference, more or less. Uh, hopefully, not only the big conferences such as Wikimania, um, but it's very important that us as Wikimedians, and here I would relate to what you're doing in Wikimedia Argentina to work with other organizations on the ground. Some organizations like Access Now or uh, Frontline Defenders or other organizations, they really provide support and they know how to train people. So there is no harm in seeking um, and collaborating with them, for example, to deliver trainings to Wikimedians, online trainings or offline trainings, depending on the pandemic, depending on the circumstances on the country. Um, there are a few tools available. Um, I would say whomever dig hard on Meta or on the web would find some tools to help, but it's very important to ask a question, to ask other Wikimedians who organize um, they could, I think they could come to you guys in Wikimedia Argentina or you in Wikimedia Switzerland for, um, for advice. Uh, so hopefully this video will reach out to as much Wikipedians as, um, as possible so they get more information, but they really should have the basic trainings in terms of online safety, for example, or the holistic approach um, or the holistic safety so they are not in um, putting themselves or anyone in danger. So um, thanks for this very thorough um, answer because I was I, I didn't have such a um, uh, overarching um, idea. I I can share about what we had been doing, but honestly, if there is a, a trainings manuals you can find uh, very quickly concerning that, that will be useful. Like personally, to make sure I was making uh, the workshop safe, I reached out to um, Wikimedia Argentina to compare practices to have your opinion, uh, Lucina, several times. Uh, what I ended up doing very concretely was uh, separating the conversations, basically. Um, for the workshops, uh, for the different uh, partnerships with other associations, which also correspond to different topics, the way I carried um, the 
the projects around each topic would be to first have a conversation with uh, the um, uh, human rights association in question. So they would help me gauge the content gaps uh, on uh, the Wikipedia that we were looking at, uh, the language version we were looking at. Uh, and then ask them about their own usual safety measures to uh, be able to protect them once we were doing something with them. Um, so this was the first conversation, usually it would last two hours. I did involve another Wikipedian uh, who was um, from the start interested in doing things with human rights, well, in doing the project with human rights. Uh, so we were two on, on the Wikimedian side to, to do that, and we had people from the other associations on the other uh, side. Then the second part of the conversation uh, will be training these um, uh, people from associations to contribute to Wikipedia without, um, without a lot of Wikipedians. It will be really a moment where we will be uh, like, I will use the word teaching, but teaching them, teaching them the rules of Wikipedia because they're really hard to, they're not so intuitive. You have to teach them at some point. So they would understand the constraints that they would have to be dealing with uh, so that um, they will be able also to provide uh, sources that were may maybe a bit more broad uh, than what they would have come up spontaneously with because usually like some of these associations have their own websites for, the, for us this is not enough on the other hand these associations know texts of law this they can help us lo locate so um, the second part of the conversation will be a training for them and then we would have a, more of an email exchange concerning sources to prepare uh, for a workshop and then we would carry out the workshop uh, since this was not possible to do uh, in presence. They all happened online. People did not use, anyone who uh, did not feel like it was safe for them to use a camera did not. We could still hear their, their voices. Uh, we used GT mainly, um, also to avoid um, any, uh, any issues concerning um, software. But I mean, this I'm talking about uh, workshops uh, within uh, uh, that were taking place with participants in France and in Switzerland. So the issue of state uh, violations for the participants was not so big. So I, I might have other answers if I was located somewhere else in the world. It's related with something that Emna also introduced before. Um, that it's related with the work that the foundation is doing in relation with creating safer uh, policies or also uh, ways of working these kind of activities um, now in a virtual situation, but thinking also in an uh, on-site um, event, for example, as Wikimania. But, and also I want to help uh, to... to to say that Jorge Vargas was a great ally in this, uh, in all these uh, last activities that we developed with the UN High Commissioner, uh, because in, during all the partnership, we need Jorge Vargas to 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 help us thinking in a legal way also, and and how to to create this alliance between different chapters in different contexts that it's not the same if I think human rights in Argentina than if I think in Switzerland or in Tunisia. So uh, I think that that it's really important. So in relation with all this, um, do you think that the Wikimedia movement need, needs to generate or to create a specific framework to develop projects or activities in local communities where human rights are under threats? I, I am thinking this in relation with, for example, the friendly space policy that we have, that we all, all of us have when we organize an editathon, for example. You think that it's important to have something like that when we are thinking specifically working on human rights? So the answer uh, is uh, 
completely yes. Uh, so of course, as as I was mentioning before, we do need something to to make uh, to make sure that uh, Wikipedians are not putting each other in danger and also not putting people from other associations um, in danger. So a framework would be welcome, but not just a framework for the events, but a framework um, that also includes all that we was mentioned before, actually, uh, that includes how to uh, have a, a class to ensure the safety of your workshops before you start doing them so you can conceive a series of workshops uh, in a way that you both have uh, the content and uh, very specific content and also uh, does not put either the activists, because we're dealing with activists, or Wikipedians in danger. Yes, uh, having like a, a framework of how this kind of, of uh, thing can be carried out, uh, ensuring safety for everyone uh, is useful otherwise. Otherwise, the option B is to settle for workshops that are a bit too general and uh, do not help people um, deal with uh, very concrete uh, um, violations that they are facing. I mean, making workshops to speak about uh, the genesis of human rights, historical aspects, etc., is useful and can be done without uh, setting up such careful uh, frameworks. But once we want to help people, if, if Wikipedia is going to help people access their uh, human rights, like right now on a daily basis, uh, it's, it's important that we do have this framework. Absolutely, yes. I, I do agree with what Flor mentioned. It's a must. I guess um, we're more than ever in need of, um, I wouldn't say structuring as much as knowing where we're going. It's like we're heading toward a direction. We should be more inclusive. We should be more diverse. And we should, we're the mirror of the societies and then their storage place where they put their data, information, history, everything there. But it's also very important that we, we are cautious of what's around and we're doing it in in the best way. So when we're talking about the friendly space policy, it's a must. No affiliate, no person organizing something related to Wikimedia, any event um, or online exchange or whatever, should, everything should be basically related and aligned with the friendly space policy. It's the same. Now we're developing the universal code of conduct, which is amazing to contribute to as like a global community. Um, and again, we're coming from different backgrounds um, and what could be a threat for some people in some countries, some continents is not a threat for others. So the others should be aware as much as, I mean, I think both sides should be aware of the threats um, and the privileges of some people. Um, because sometimes um, I am very, very aware of um, cases where sometimes people, they did not take very serious um, uh, cer certain concerns. In, uh, and I, I'm not talking about the Wikimedia specifically, but in general, when it comes to human rights, when they uh, walk in a, in a room and they talk about human rights, they are coming from certain countries and they are naming some people, for example, um, they go out and that, that person is in trouble um, because of that. Um, that happened in different communities and different conferences, but let's hope this does not happen within the Wikimedia movement and let's hope we don't reach that point. So we should um, have something tangible, something written so anyone who is willing to work um, in, the, in developing more content about human rights and working in organizing workshops and pro projects or programs related to human rights, they should be aware of. So we're not putting anyone in danger and we're not um, contributing to any type of misinformation or um, I would say mansplaining, trying to show them how to do things. <laughs> it's, it's, 
definitely no. We should just stay away from this. Yes, first of all, thank you a lot. Uh, I have the pleasure of being in some of these uh, ocean dialogues, and I really learn a lot from all our um, persons that, that we invite. Um, so thank you, first of all. I was thinking about what Emna said about the universal and the local. I, I really think uh, we should create universal uh, codes, but those universal codes should be uh, written or um, done by local uh, places because uh, in the local is where we, we have all these issues and what Emna said, mansplaining, uh, putting in risk uh, persons for uh, some situations. So it's really interesting how we, we, we go to the universal, but where we start uh, uh, doing that. So I also think that, that we should think about that. And it's some issue that also in, in the, the dialogues I have the, the pleasure to participate, some information always appears. For example, the anonymacy and the important that all we need to learn about anonymacy and all we have to still work on our workshops online or on site uh, and how we, we still work with that. So I think that we have a lot to um, to do, to work, and to to talk because I think that in these dialogues is where we we get the issues and we get the solutions. So it's really interesting to to continue talking, and so in that way, I think we can get to the best uh, ways. It's frameworks, policies, or whatever it is, but it's uh, by dialoguing and by talking uh, in the local experiences. So really, thank you very much for for being here and for the learnings. Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you a lot because it, it was difficult to to organize our agenda <laughs> to to have a day where in which we can have this kind of dialogue. I know and, and I, I, I think that all of us share this idea. It's a urgent dialogue, it's a must that we need to be thinking all the time. It's not something that you decide and you state and it, you continue. You are all the time thinking and rethinking how to work human rights in this kind of, of, of communities and also with people in different parts of the world. But I think that these kind of experiences and, and ways of, of find ourselves thinking together uh, beyond Wikimedia, thinking human rights in, in, in our context, it's really important and, and strength our, our movement. So um, thank you really, really very much. And I love to, to, to hear both of you because um, for me, it's, it's like, I don't know, I, I, am, I am proud uh, of the women that, that it are together thinking Wikimedia uh, and our role in the Wikimedia movement. So thank you very much, Emna and Flor. And Flor, you too, thank you very much. I'm really honored to be with you. And I learned a lot, by the way. Um, <laughs> I had a time, like when I was answering, I was reflecting on the things that we did and your questions were like um, pushing me to think and further dig in my brain on what I went through and things that we did and we have to do and I would love to hear more about what you're doing in both countries actually and learn from that because so far I've been doing it as individual um, work um, and I would love to have a project um, around it not just um, a temporary let's say a organize a workshop to add content about women or to add content about Syrian refugees or other, uh, I would love to have like a more uh, more of a project than just um, temporary activities. So if you have anything to share with me, please do. Thank you very much. Thanks. To both of you. <laughs> and I don't know, hope we can see us uh, on site. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, if someday. not, <laughs> we are here <laughs> in a virtual way, but we are here. Thank you very much. Thanks to all.